For today's Cyberwork Hack, we're going to take you by the hand and lead you through the magical land of Oz? Nope, GitHub. Jacob DePriest, the VP Deputy Chief Security Officer at GitHub, will walk you right through the front door of this massive open source tool and code sharing site with over 100 million developers and tell you how and where to get started. If you've previously put off getting to know GitHub, now is your chance to explore with a newfound sense of purpose, one that could have only come from a cyberwork hack. Welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spin-off of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution. Today's guest is GitHub's VP, Deputy, Deputy Chief Security Officer, Jacob DePriest. Jacob and I had a excellent conversation over on the Cyberwork podcast, and if you haven't seen it yet, I definitely suggest you check it out next. Uh, Jacob has been part of uh, GitHub's initiative to make security a top priority for its site and its users alike. Uh, but if you're just getting into the field or you're technically challenged like me, uh, you might have probably heard of GitHub or maybe even visited GitHub a little bit, but you might not really know what GitHub is or how it works or what to do with it uh, once you start to understand it. So if that's you, stick around and let's learn together. Uh, thanks for joining me, Jacob. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's great to be here. Uh, so let's start with the simplest of simple questions. What is GitHub? How long has it been around and why was why did it become such a massively important tool for developers? Yeah, so GitHub is a software collaboration platform where developers uh, all over the world uh, develop their code, test their code, manage it, uh, do continuous integration and build and security and a variety of other things. And so uh, we have over 100 million developers on the platform now, 90% of the Fortune Top 100 and 3.5 billion total contributions. And so uh, in many ways, it is one of the central pillars of the software development ecosystem in the world. Yeah, it, there's there's a feeling of like if if GitHub didn't exist a GitHub would would invent itself or something like it just seems so integral to the process. Now I'm I'm curious if if you have a sense of 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 the the how that happened, how it became like like you said, it's just like the like the spine of the entire thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, open source has been around. Uh, you know, GitHub's been around for 15 years. Open source has been around for longer, but like right. I think in many ways, GitHub provided this central. Uh, both catalyst and rallying point for the world's open source developers to come together. And then, you know, in addition, we have some really great enterprise tools that companies need uh, to build. And it's even it's great because so many developers do open source uh, early on in their careers, whether it's in school or as a hobby. And then they go work for companies and they're like, hey, I want to use the same tools that I'm using on the weekend to build these things. And so it's really kind of this it's turned into both a professional and um, you know, open source way to just do software development for the world. Love it. Uh, so if you were talking to an absolute rank beginner, mm -hmm, uh, what would be your advice to uh, about where to start when checking out GitHub? Are, are there any search tools that you think don't get enough use or any any sort of like tips uh, for like you, you've walked in the front door and, and now what do you look at? Yeah, so uh, I always point, uh, especially kind of folks who are uh, not super familiar with GitHub or Git, um, even who joined the company, uh, to skills.github.com. We have a great kind of training mm -hmm. program that uh, is interactive. You can kind of walk through it and do a bunch of projects and tutorials uh, right on the platform itself. Um, you know, we have a ton of free uh, capabilities, free open source hosting, free code spaces, uses for like a developer platform, mm -hmm. free tier of almost everything we do. And so uh, it's just a great way to kind of walk a new developer through that. The other thing I would point out too is, uh, free Azure training. So a lot mm. of folks are interested in cloud development uh, yeah. as well as sort of general development. And there's a lot of, I mean, just hundreds and hundreds of hours of free Azure training that's available as well. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, so uh, that, that's a, that's a great starting place. So let's let's move one level up the the newbie food chain. So let's say you're it's your first day on the job. You're 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 a new developer. You've done a bit of hands on work in your studies. Maybe you've done some stuff on the weekends, but you have a very fast and steep learning curve once you start your first real job in the field. And your supervisor maybe gives you a project and some vague requests, you know, to find some materials on GitHub or figure them out for yourself. Like, do you have a basic search routine personally in your mind when you need to find something on GitHub? 
Sure. I think um, kind of two things come to mind. One is, you know, any any search engine out there uh, feels like is almost inextricably linked to GitHub uh, code yeah. at this point. And so I think a lot of people just will go to their favorite search engine and, and start to find kind of what they need and how to do. We have a search built into the platform as well, which is really compelling if you have a more specific thing you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think is really interesting now, too, is once you've kind of narrowed down the thing you want to do as a developer, uh, but maybe you're not as familiar with the language or the syntax or whatever. We have a new AI powered development uh, system called Copilot, um, uh -huh. which will do essentially uh, AI powered auto completion for developers. And if you haven't seen the tutorials or the videos on that, I mean, it's it's absolutely mind blowing. I use it wow. every day. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really incredible. And so I think that is a, a, a bit of a game changer in getting folks up to speed as well, particularly as they land in a new area and, and maybe don't have familiarity with the, all the tools that are involved there. That's great to know. What, what was the name of that again? Copilot. Copilot. OK. Uh, so um, speaking from a security standpoint, what tips do you have for evaluating the quality or feasibility or use of materials that you find on, on, on GitHub? Like what should people be looking for as they're as they're picking and grabbing uh, open source things? That's an interesting question. I don't, you know, first of all, say I don't think there's a universal answer to this. And so I think okay. a lot of this comes from uh, leveraging the best practices of this, the security teams that developers are working with every day. Um, some of the some of the things that may go into those decisions would be things like the number and frequency of contributions to an open source project. So how active is it? Does it have, you know, uh, multiple people contributing to it and fixing things and, and opening pull requests on it? Um, is it, you know, does it have star, like we have a, a way to star a project. So how okay. many stars does it have? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can look at the security tab of an open source project and see a little bit of insight into how they're approaching uh, the security tools and integrations as well. Now, out of curiosity, is there, would there be any benefit if there, I, I don't know if there's like, like something that's low rated, you know, in on a star basis that you could look through and, and sort of use that as, as like a personal exercise in your head to like figure out what's going what's going wrong with that or 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 is it really just like stick to the stick to the five star uh, well i think pieces. it's really complex with open source right because yeah. you know just because something may not have as many stars as another project it may just mean that there's less people in the world less who are interested okay. in that particular piece of technology maybe the quality is really high and so i think there is you know it does take a nuanced view depending on what's the need the developers trying to solve the teams trying to solve and what are the security requirements around it um, and so I think, you know, there's also the opportunity that if it's maybe not got everything they need or maybe not, not doesn't have as much activity, become a contributor and start opening up pull requests and, you know, build that open source community around that project. And so I think that's a really uh, cool uh, way to deal with some of these things as well. So um, moving up to the sort of next level, the, the I'm, I'm sure a lot of the sort of like actual experts have, have turned this off by now because they feel like I'm playing in the sandbox. But if you're a developer or security professional who's going to be spending a lot of time on GitHub, do you have any shortcuts or organizational tips for regular users, especially with uh, we mentioned in the in the in the other program about, you know, some of the shortcuts that people use to, you know, do passwords and, and keys and stuff so they don't fall out of flow. But do you have any uh, organizational tips in that regard for people who are on GitHub pretty much all the time? Sure. I mean, I can tell you what a lot of our engineering teams do every day, all day. So they use code spaces with uh, built in configurations so that when an, whether it's a new person or a seasoned engineer uh, joins the team, uh, or is on the team, they can spin up a code space that's got a very specific and well-known and repeatable uh, development environment. And so like we, that's how we develop our core GitHub platform. Mm -hmm. And then uh, almost everybody's using Copilot now as well, our AI powered nice. uh, developer assistant. And, uh, and then, you know, there's a lot of kind of shortcuts that we build in for developers. A lot of developers don't like their hands to leave the keyboard. And so you can yeah. actually navigate most of GitHub just through shortcut keys ah. uh, and moving around that way as well. So there's a lot of fun things there. Um, yeah. That's a that's a that's a pretty good overview there. So uh, one last question: If our listeners have any further questions about getting started on GitHub or any other questions for you, Jacob, where should they where should they look? Uh, on GitHub, we have a great documentation. Uh, getting started, you know, a lot of the getting started on GitHub uh, links for any search engine will point you to some really great tutorials on our site. For me personally, I'm at Jacob DePriest uh, at on most of the social media platforms. And then for GitHub uh, security, uh, follow us on Twitter and the GitHub blog. We keep those very up to date and uh, post regularly. Beautiful. Jacob DePriest, thank you for walking us through the basics of GitHub today. This was so much fun. Thanks for having me. Enjoyed it.
Uh, and thank you all for watching this episode. If this video helped you, please share it with colleagues or forums or on your social media accounts. And definitely subscribe to our podcast feed and YouTube page. Just type in cyber work in any of them and you're on your way. There's plenty more to come. And if you have any topics that you want us to cover, drop them in the comments. Until then, we will see you next time. Take care. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12th most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.